Hello there and thanks for joining us on your top flight program, People, Politics and Power. Remember, this is a rebranded and refocused program anchored on the need to create a template for a united Nigeria. There's no doubt that we are better a united as a, a united nation rather than a divided one for whatever reasons and or whatever grievances we may have. So many issues have been thrown up and they seem to be heating up the polity rather than douse the tension that is building up across the country. Now, even as the debates heat up, some commentators hold a strong view that Nigeria must be restructured. But in what form and in what shape should that restructuring take? Some suggest political restructuring. Others insist it has to be financial restructuring. All of these came up at the last national conference that took place in 2014. Now, that makes the document produced by that uh, uh, conference, or by the conferees at that conference, very relevant. The Nigeria of our dream, the Nigeria we need, is the united, indissoluble, and cohesive Nigeria, which guarantees equity, fairness, justice, and prosperity for its citizens. That is our focus on people, politics, and power. It is fresh, insightful, impactful, it's a must watch. People, politics, and power on AIT. Join us to build bridges of unity. We talk about gas flaring all over the whole place. And there's gas flaring penalty, fines that are being paid. I think uh, 1990, early 90s, it was discovered. So much money in Central Bank for gas flaring penalty. Nothing has happened. Why? Because up till now, no cobble has gone to oil producing communities. Go to Gele Gele in Ovia Northeast, in those states. The health problems facing people from that area. What are we doing about it? The money in central bank. Can this money be released and be given to these communities to empower them? As a nation, nobody will give us independence. We had to negotiate and fight for it. As a youth, manna will not come from heaven. You must be dedicated. Wash your hand and eat with your elders. At their food, you will gain wisdom. <laughs> this is what some of us have lived for. Even though I succeeded by here as a federal commissioner, I knew that we in the army, the young ones, we were inspired to work hard and to look for the best for this country. Nzogu, Anuforo, Onwatwego, all these youngsters I called were behind the coup of 1966. They were my friends, we were colleagues. We won and died together at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. We were on two divides. God has brought us all together. I think that we still believe that the sovereignty of this country must be protected. And in protecting it, in protecting it, I believe the sovereign wealth of this country should be shared and used equitably so that we have an equitable federation where peace and justice reigns. The young man just spoke about the need for generational change. 
I don't believe anyone sitting here amongst the leaders here, the older generation, is averse to generational change. I am on record to have called upon the youth of this country to take over the leadership of Nigeria, that we, in our generation, had done the best we can for Nigeria. At the times we took those decisions, we thought we were doing the best for Nigeria. Over time, over time, the things have changed, and that therefore a new generation of leaders should emerge. You can't, by just talking about it here, you should go into politics, go into commerce, and begin to change Nigeria as the youth of this country. The young man you spoke to, the young man in France that you mentioned, didn't sit back asking for change. He went into setting up his own party and began to move uh, 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 the people around, made them understand that he was ready to make the change in Nigeria, in, 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 uh, in France. Now, at the time, at the time, some of us were in government. We were in our early 30s. General Gawan was in his 30. Chief Awolowo was in his early 40. Maitama Sule was in his 28. Sheikh Hushagari was about 30. Maitama Sule was, was about 24. J.S. Taka was about 20, 23. And there were ministers of this country. But so, the Nigerian youth, you have the challenge now to begin to move to change for the better. You can, but, but, but remember that you need the advice and the support of your elders who had seen it all. I was 24, going to 25, when I was made governor. But in the aviation world, once you cannot get captaincy of an aircraft, of a commercial aircraft, for instance, until you are 24. So 20, at 24, you're supposed to be a responsible person. We were, we were taught a doctor does seven years in the university before graduating, while others can, after four years, can go into uh, service. The reason is that a doctor is a very skilled person. He may be on, in an operation theater and um, he makes a mistake. How many people die? One. At least one at a time. <laughs> the point here is if a pilot of that aircraft makes a mistake, how many people die? So you can see it's a grave responsibility. What I can say to the youths we are still on our feet. You should not wish us dead. <laughs> so when I was little, um, the chap who used to deliver the, the mail comes with a pencil. He had a red pencil on one end and a blue one on the other, or gray one. And I said he should give me one. There was no need give him carrying two pencils. And he said, never mind, I'll give it to you tomorrow. And he came again and said, tomorrow, I said, tomorrow never ends. So what we're saying to the youths, you've got to train, you've got to prepare, you've got to run faster. Like the Bonvita advertisement says, when you beat me, <laughs> then I know you have arrived. You cannot expect um, you sitting down and, uh, well, the Holy Ghost can descend on you and you, become, you can speak with tongues. But... but we also have the Holy Ghost descending on us. The Nigeria of our dream, the Nigeria we need, is the united, indissoluble and cohesive Nigeria which guarantees equity, fairness, justice and prosperity for its citizens. That is our focus on people, politics and power. It is fresh, insightful, impactful. It's a must watch. People, politics and power on AIT. Join us to build bridges of unity. We want to take another look at the issue. This time, from a fresh perspective. That is why we have invited to the studio 
another personality who took part in that conference. Let me welcome Yinka Odumaki to People, Politics, and Power. Yinka Odumaki, of course, seems to hold an opinion which is representative of the Afenifere group, and by extension, the Yoruba nationality. Welcome to People, Power, and Politics. My pleasure. So am I correct to say that um, as a member of the Affairs Fair Group, you hold a view that is representative of the Affairs Fair Group and by extension, the Yoruba nation? Oh, well, clearly, we gauge the mood, the temperature, and the temperaments of the Yoruba nation. And beyond that, uh, the last uh, reunion by Delegate to 2014 National Conference, I uh, represented the Southwest and I made it very clear where we stand on this issue. Beyond the uh, Yoruba nation as a group, we have uh, resolved the way we have done from the 1950 by the conference, that Nigeria should be run as a federal entity, and that the current unity arrangement that we are practicing, just as our Lord warned us in 1967, in his book, Thought on the Indian Constitution, can only be productive of what we are having now. Disharmony, discontent, the administrative uh, machine of government granted to a hot. Because, like I would say then, that except you get superhuman beings to run the affairs of Nigeria on the military constitution, you are not going to get it right. And we have not gotten it right in 50, in 50 years since the military usurped a uh, federal constitution. And we cannot get it right except go back to that. Because recently, you know, I was looking at the 1973 constitution once again, and I saw you had the federal constitution. We had the Western Indian Constitution, Eastern Indian Constitution, Northern Indian Constitution, in one document. And so today now, we now run the system from Abuja. We want to run this whole country from Abuja. There's no, reason, there's no other explanation for why the country is falling apart. Where there's conflict around and there, than the fact that you have refused to do the right thing. That you cannot run a multi-ethnic nation like Nigeria along unitary lines. You talk of a federal system and a unitary system. Yes. Constitution after constitution that has been given to the Nigerian people clearly says that we are a federal republic. Is it that we have it in words but not in practice? Yeah, that's a lie. It's one of our many contradictions. You see, we claim that we are a federal republic, whereas we are a unitary republic. We say that we are a republic, which is not so. We, we make claim to, we say we are a democracy. Where is the democracy? So, it's a contrast in, in terms when our country says that we are a federal republic in Nigeria. In which federal republic do you see states going to the center at the end of the month to go and collect check? In how many federation is it that you want to register a company in Deza? You have to come to Abuja to come and register a company. In how many federations do you have Ministry of Agriculture, Federal Ministry of Agriculture? Doing what? Agriculture in Baesa? It's not agriculture in Sukuto? It's not agriculture in other states? In how many federations do you they tell you that power is on the exclusive list? Only federal government can touch it. In how many federations do you have a federal minister, minister of education running the education for Abuja? We say you want to run university for Abuja. So clearly, everything we do here negates federalism. We only answer federation in name, and indeed, we are not a federation. Now, is your argument, therefore, that Nigeria is where it is today simply because we have refuse to adopt the principles of federalism and democratic practice. Definitely. There's no other reason for why we are where we are than the fact that we have refused to run Nigeria to create a proper structure for Nigeria. And, to, and once we have a proper structure, you cannot run a, a democracy. I mean, I mean for, for, for instance, tomorrow I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking at um, Pike Clark's uh, United Bede, and there's a colloquium, and they're seeing that they have a national discourse. And my position is that we are not having a national discourse. We are having a Nigerian discourse. 
we are not yet a nation. If we are a nation, we will not be bogged down by with all these debates of resource control, health men, grazing uh, roots, uh, ranching. Is the fact we are not a nation. So it's nothing national. So all we are still having is Nigerian conservation. And Nigeria is an am amalgamation. And to the extent of which we refuse to have a nation, you cannot build a democracy where you don't have a nation. Because the foundation has to be the nation. But where you don't have a nation, where you have despite groups pretending to be one, you continue to have what you have. Okay, why, why is it now? Mr. President is sick. Your conscience says that once the president is not available, the vice president takes over his functions. Now we are in the situation. A letter was transmitted, I'm traveling abroad. First time, uh, Mr. Pre uh, my vice president will carry my functions. Second time, he will carry my functions of office. Third time, he will be coordinator of government activities. Now you have a nothing president who cannot sign a budget, who cannot swear ministers. He isn't that just semantics because the, the acting president is actually performing the duties and responsibilities of the president. Whether it is coordinator or, uh, or uh, transmission of power, so-called, is it not just semantics? It's not semantics. It's what the Germans call real politics. It's, I mean, of, of why, I mean, like I, I've posed two things now. Why has he not sworn the ministers who have been cleared three weeks ago by Senate? They have had two federal state council meetings. That tells you clearly that there's power of show going on. And it's all because of, oh, it's our, it's our power. And that person cannot fully exercise it. Whereas you have a nation, it does not matter who's, 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 who's there. So, on, and until we address that fundamental issue to make this country, country a nation, because at present we are just a country. So, what do we need to do to make Nigeria a nation? That is the fundamental question that you have raised now. Yes. What, in your view, what do we need to do? What is it that we must do that we have not done in over 55 years of political independence? Thank you so much. The first thing that we have to do is that, first of all, you know, I think it was Zig and, and, and uh, who had this conversation with the amount of below. First of all, I said, let's forget our differences. I said, no, we should not forget our differences. Let us understand our differences and build the architecture of power that favors our differences so that our differences can become advantages to us. We can leverage on our diversity and become a nation. But once we want to pretend, oh, we are one nation, where's the nation? There's no nation. You say it's one. First, we must recognize that we are different people. We are different nationalities who never knew each other, who are living their lives, who never knew themselves until the guy that amalgamated the north and the south and said, I found a good suitor on the north for the southern lady of Mins. When you look at the map of Nigeria, the natural boundaries were the manager and the Babenui. You look at this clearly. But the amalgamation took place. There is a clash of civilizations in Nigeria. The way the different groups do their things are different. And therefore, to have a nation, you must recognize those differences, allow the, the, the various groups autonomy to run their lives according to their civilization. And then, they, we, and then agree that these are the things we want to put as gender. These are the resources we want to take to the center. These are the powers we want to grant to the center over us. These are things we want to run on our own. So when you have an unwieldy exclusive list that the federal government must up power over everything, it cannot work. Isn't that a prescription for a confederal system? Not necessarily so for a federal system. Look, we are not, we are breaking all the rules of success as a nation. And we are pretending that we want to succeed. It's not possible. It cannot happen. Look at what they are doing now. When we, want, when we go and take oil Niger data, VAT from Lagos, and then we said, we call federal election account, we begin to share money. And then when you come to that table, 
say yes. Um, Jigawa is more populated than than uh, your states. So based on that population, they should have more money. Oh, there's a greater land mass in Niger states. So based on that land, they should have more money. I was sitting another other state man. One of the progressive elements on the north, Alaji uh, Danku Yakasai. And they're very consistent on it in the time. That, oh, those who are calling for the social Nigeria, they want to take away the two natural advantages you have, which are used to get money from the center population and landmass. And I shook my head. Landmass. Today, the landmass of Niger, Niger states is more than the landmass of Netherlands. Netherlands is the second exporter, largest exporter of agriculture in the whole world after USA. So, what's, what's Niger State doing with land? To come and take revenue for Abuja. And uh, we are making a big mistake because we are locked down with this oil money for Niger data. Honestly, if we take away the corruption in Nigeria, based on the oil revenue, Nigeria will still remain a poor country. I'll give you a sentence. Nigeria today has a population of roughly 200 million people. Our GDP is 438 billion naira based on oil. Ireland, they have no oil. Their population is 4.6 million people. Their GDP is 238 billion dollars. And here we are locked down with oil. Oh, we are rich. We are taking to oil. What, what oil? So, even if they are not stealing money, let's say this old money is available for development, we still remain a poor country. We are us. If you look at the resource map, of, and, and, and you see, they say, always say this, that the enemy, of, the enemy of better is good. Because the nonsense we are doing now is good some, to some people. For instance, let's take a state like Jigawa. Jigawa generates less than $200 million Nara IGR every month. But come to Abuja, take four billion, four billion naira from Virgin accounts. So, when you say research, let us research, your, oh, they want to take that from our from us. We are us. If we do what they are asking them to do, if we go now diversify, say that every state, let's take mining from exclusion away from exclusive list, take it to concurrence. That every state begin to mine what you have. A study has been done that shows that if you operate on that in a year. The various mineral resources deposited all over the country will generate 50 trillion naira every year in this country. As against 6 trillion naira oil that we do now, that we think we are rich, and most of it being stolen. Mm. So, wh wh why, in your view, do you think that the call and the agitation for restructuring seem to strike fear in the minds of certain people? Wh what, in your view, is the true meaning of restructuring? What should it mean? Perhaps, perhaps those who are agitating for restructuring have not explained it well enough for the other people to understand that it is uh, a mutually beneficial exercise we at are, the end of the day. We have, we've not only explained it, we've acted it, we put it on the table to show you that the subject we're talking about is to create co-prosperity over Nigeria for everybody to be happy. So we don't need to be, to be, to be in, this, in this war situation where you send heads men to go and be inflicting harms on community, be raping their women, killing farmers, doing that kind of thing and the rest. Because there is so small thing we are all running about. Let's create prosperity everywhere that nobody have chance to go and be disturbing another person. And we did it at the 24th National Conference. We said that let us set aside 5% of our revenue every year to go and be digging resources in every part of Nigeria. Gold, uh, bitumen, uh, this every iron, everything located in the part of Nigeria. Let's go and digging them out up and make every every part of Nigeria centers of production. Rather than this, just take oil from Nigeria, data, take VAT from Lagos, and now begin to fight white. I uh, will be president. It's our turn. It's not your turn. This is our power. It's not our power. Uh, yes, men today. Uh, today. Because we are not we are not doing the right thing. So. To, tell, to make it clear, we agree that five percent sets aside every state. We have, let's bring let's bring the businesses out. Let's create wealth all over the place. Let's create jobs. You but, agreed on that at the at the twenty fourteen conference. Yes. Yeah, but after the national conference, you are also aware that 
some of the delegates, particularly from a particular section of the country, have reneged on the agreements that you reach at the conference. They have said that they, 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 they for instance, insist that they will not support the call for restructuring mm. until the northern part of Nigeria is developed. <laughs> I'm sorry. What they're asking for is disintegration of Nigeria. You have heard people down for over 50 years on the basis of this thing, and you think they are ready to be, go to be heard again down for another 50 years? They are it's not possible. And that's, and, that's the, and that's what I call the clash of civilizations. You said you must not develop on the idea of and you're, not, and you're not ready to develop. This morning I was reading uh, in one of the papers that a ref of Kano State said that they should cancel J uh, Jonathan's scholarship because he's creating this distortion in their system. One state in the, in the was it Adama also? Or we are, they said that all the schools that Jonathan built for them, they cannot, they, it's a waste, they cannot continue to maintain it. And say, once, and, then, and then say, I must wait for you. You go and do your exam to Unity, Unity schools. My child has to score 200 to get admission. Your own has to score 2 marks, 3 marks. And you say this, you both come to get, when, and when you now finish, my child has, has to take 200 marks to get admission, and your own has scored 3 or 4. You should go and sit down and do national planning. What are they going to plan together? Let's allow the social need. We want development for the, for the part of the country. Don't forget, we in the West today, we the only thing we hold against our law was abandoning us in the West to want to go and vie for the pre president of Nigeria. So that because what you will do for, the, for us in the West, you want to do it for all Nigerians. That's why he left us. As I think our law left us in the West, we are, we, are, we are going to be a first world country. But, but we watched we watch television before before before, before Southern France. Two years after Britain watched television, we are watching television in Western region. These are the things that I will say, okay, let us do it for all over the country. And it was said then, a political leader from the North was on the campaign hustling. And then he got to a community, dust was over his nose, and he brought his handkerchief. And he brought and he blew his nose and said, Oh, see dust in my nose. I will all cause this one for me to be campaigning to my subjects. I will pay for it. And I will all pay for it. So, so was it wrong for Awolowo to have sought to move from the region to the center and replicate what he did in Western region for the rest of Nigeria? Well, it, it, it was not wrong. It, that tells you that, you know, when we say Afeni Ferry, many people don't know the meaning. When we say Afeni Ferry, it means that the good I want my, for myself is the good I want for you. That's why we stand. So when we call for the church churning, we are saying that we, we know what is good for us. Let all of us explain the good things. But there's a group in this country that believe it's about domination and conquest. That they don't, because, and, 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 they, and they run a social trafficking system that does not allow equality. No grass to grace. If you are born poor, you are poor. If you are born rich, you are rich. I'll give you a story. This was a life story Chief Enahoro told some of us. That in the First Republic, as a minister of Western Region, he visited the Premier of the North. And after dinner, they were having discussions, they were having jokes, discussing and rest. And the Premier of the North was telling Enahoro that how come that you people in the West, you are so gullible that Aulawa is disturbing, is, is deceiving you, saying he's doing free education, free this, free that, and you are all clapping for him. Can so children go to those schools that is beautiful for you? And then I said, Mr. Premier, Aulawa's children, Tokumbo, Aulawa, he's not ambassador to my world this morning, and Aulawa's driver's son, they attend the same school in Ibadan. And they go to school in Awolo Oscar. And the premier spat on the floor and said, wow. How can, he do, how can the son of the driver go to school in my own car? If that child will go to school in my car, I would want to, I would want to give birth to him, not the driver. That is it. And so, when you now say that, until, until you take off that system, I must not develop. 
or I'll be more developed than you, therefore, you must keep everything in Abuja. Now, Abuja will say, if this one doesn't move, this one doesn't move. You cannot take it for long. Mm, that brings us to the fundamental question of the theory of development. Yes. For Nigeria, what is our perception of development? What should it be? What, what should it have been in these last 20, uh, 55 or 56 years of independence? Is it that we did not, uh, from the beginning, properly enunciate what development part we wanted to take, to take us to wherever, whatever goals that we set for ourselves? Or did we, in fact, set any goals for ourselves? In the first report, we had that. When we had the regions, there was heavy and positive competition among the regions. As Aulo was doing his thing in the west, Zig was doing his own in the east, Amundi was doing his own in the north. But the moment we changed that to this attempt to for, for this command and control from Abuja, we neglected all that. Now, the worst in us now became the benchmark. And therefore, there's a benchmark, there's a glass ceiling beyond which we must not go. For instance, look at power, for goodness sake. We say we must run power from Abuja. If, if, if we are decentralized and we allow the, each of these geopolitical zones to go and do their own power on their own, would the six, if, 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 let's say, South, Southwest goes to Germany to go on technology, South East, South South go to, the, to, to India, this one go to China, this one go to different countries, would all the six feel at the same time? Some may fail, some will succeed. But once you say it is from Abuja here, it must run everything. Once Abuja failed, your country fails. And so, and people like, like that, because of this command and control, command and control. So, where we are today, if this country wants to move forward, we must get back to where we were in 63. We must allow every section of the country to move at their own pace. We must agree on what we want to do with our center. Let people live their civilizations. This structure we are running now is not working. And if it's not taking, it may crash this country. That position was conversed very vigorously yeah. by delegates to the National Conference from the Southwest. Yes. But you didn't seem to have uh, been able to push it through with other delegates from other parts of Nigeria. No, there was a compromise we reached. What was that the, compromise? Yes, there was a compromise. The compromise we reached was that because of the fears, because we realized at the other day that what will work for us in the immediate in the Southwest may not work for other peoples. And therefore, we struck a compromise. Because, like we said, we want the good of everybody, not only our own. And the company was struck was that, okay, the reason why we recommend 54 states, which, and which, which, can, which are viable, if you go on the route we are saying, that let us begin to dig out what is in every part of Nigeria. Nigeria can, so, can Nigeria can support 100 states. But on the basis of this oil, we remain poor. I said this at 2014 National Conference. It's on record. That if the price of oil should crash, only Lagos and if you still be able to pay salaries, we are good today. So until we, until, until, we do, until we go back to that, to ensure that we create a template that allows the harvesting of resources, not sharing. Not if you have, 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 if you have more people than me, put those people to work now. Let them make money. If you have more land than me, cultivate it now. Don't say that I want to use the land and the people to come and take revenue from Abuja for Ministry of Finance. And I have more people, give me more money. I have more land, give me more money. Where is that wrong? The land is a, is, is a good factor of production. Cultivate it and, and, and make money. So you have more, more land than me, and you cultivate it, you make more money than me. If my, you have more people than me, take out, don't, don't say they should go and beg. Get them to work. You, so when we become productive citizens, you're more prosperous than me. But to think, but the money we, we just said, that, oh no, we must just go and share our money in Abuja mm. and VAT from Lagos and other places, we are wasting our time. The Nigeria of our dream, the Nigeria we need is the united, indissoluble and cohesive Nigeria which guarantees equity, fairness, 
justice and prosperity for its citizens. That is our focus on people, politics and power. It is fresh, insightful, impactful. It's a must watch. People, politics and power on AIT. Join us to build bridges of unity. There is a lot of tension across the land today. To the extent that we are beginning to hear of rumors of coup in a democracy, uh, what do you think we ought to do? What should we do to work around this and to preserve our democratic credentials? I think it's a sad day for the Nigerian military when its chief will come and face this nation, this country rather, and be behaving like the FCC that finds money at airports without the owner and become a whistleblower on coup. Oh, some people are approaching military officers to cause a coup. You have director of the military intelligence. If there are rumors of coup, if some people are being approached, you spread your dragnets, arrest such people, know the people who are approaching them, get your investigations to, to some point, and then you brief the nation. But for you to come out and say some people have been approached, you are just, you are, you are, you are, you are, I'm sorry to say, you are spreading the fear of coup. In fact, now you, uh, people are now expecting that there, be, there may be something. Because when the Chiba Minister comes to show you thing, then there's now, people are now expectant that something may happen. And I think that's quite unfortunate. And in fact, if, if our system is working, such an army chief should, look for that, for, should, should be given that job. Because it's, it's a failure of intelligence. It's a failure of duty for you, as your Mr. F, to just blow whistle that who are, are being approached for a coup. You should, have, you should have kept quiet, get those who, have been, those who are involved, arrest them, do your investigations, get those who are approaching them before you come to the public. So as it is now, and, and uh, uh, I said we we'll see, see those people who are suspected and rest of them now. I mean, all we take it that perhaps the army chief just spreading the fear. But he did say that some politicians, you are a politician. Yeah. Some politicians are approaching military officers. I mean, why would politicians in the first place want to truncate a democratic system of which they are beneficiaries? It's wrong for any politicians to prefer military rule to civil rule. But, I, but, when that, but who are they now? We don't know. So which, is why, which was the reason why what you should have done is to get those who have been approached and then now they try to approach them. But to leave the rules in the air, some, for some politicians, I'm politicians you have in Nigeria. So it's, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's the right thing to do. And it's not... I mean, we, we, when we have standards, that was not the approach. Our standards are falling every day. And because I do not see anywhere in the world where what uh, the chief army staff would do when there's a threat to democracy is just to blow the whistle. Mm. Uh, along the uh, uh, same lines of the cry for, of marginalization, has risen the cry for restructuring. And in some extreme cases, some people have gone to the extent of seeing secession. Yes. Uh, you see, there are, there, are, there are three groups in Nigeria today. The group, the hegemonic group, that because of temporary small, small advantages that amount to nothing, if you can look at the picture, one Nigeria to remain as it is. There's another group that they are, they are one extreme. There's another group another extreme who have said we have look at this Nigeria. It cannot work. You are just, it's just a bind. You are knocking your head against the wall. We want, we want out. There are those of us at the center in the middle of these two groups who are saying, hey, you on the right, you on the left. Let's come to the center. Let us discuss. Let us negotiate. Let's restructure. Let's agree. Let's do it this way. Let's go set at five percent. Let's go and look for mineral resources and let's make everybody happy. Now, the hegemony forces, 
they are telling us that forget it. The fear in that today is that if the hegemonic forces, if they silence this group, they cannot silence this group, they want to opt out. And it's, it's examples all over us. Where is Sweden today? Where is Yugoslavia? Where is Yugoslavia? So there's a call of nature which Nigeria cannot escape if you don't do the right thing. And the time is now, because it, I'm, I can tell you, a time is even coming that the structuring will, cannot, will not be able to address the Nigerian crisis. That, in fact, those who are opposing the structuring now, they will be hawking the structuring. Come, come, people are saying, no, we are gone, we are not coming back. So we have to do it now. Do you believe that Nigeria is workable? Nigeria is workable. And on what terms? On the terms of a restructure policy based on true federalism, where we promote the culture of work, where we free the nationalities to pursue their happiness, where we shun the quest for domination, conquest, how to treat the of the country of the country like clients. Nigeria will work on that term. But if you want to insist on what you are doing now, Nigeria cannot work. Now, how do you react to those who believe that Nigeria is where it is today and that Nigeria cannot move forward because of the individuals and characters that have either held Nigeria down or have continued to run Nigeria from independence in 1960? Well, um, there's a group called the Class of 1966. Uh, they came in, they were in 1966, during the first coup. They were either majors, captains, lieutenants, and the rest of them. They have held the country by, by the jugular since 1966 up to now. Either you are running civil rule, you are running military rule. They've always been there. It's them. When the, the last time, when we, af, after June 12th, when we faced them, our boys were about five, five years, they had to retreat to the barrack. What, what did they do? They quickly organized brought one of them to come and head civ uh, civilian administration. And then they came back as the generals, as senators, as this, and took over everywhere. I mean, even the, your, your former, former military ruler, General Bangida, confessed that they are the military wing of PDP. And uh, the recent, uh, recently when they said the president was ill and the rest of them, there was you know, so that the three, the three of them met in the mina. So, and when you look at Arisi in the same time, he said, Babangida is telling you that uh, we, we brought Obasanjo in 20, 1999. Obasanjo is telling you, I brought Yaradua, I brought Jonathan. I, so, it's all about, it's their game. And the rest of us, we have become like uh, ballot bosses. We participate on, on election day. After that, we are not part of the game. And so, we must restructure Nigeria and fully embrace participatory democracy. Where the people are involved in the daily learning of their fears and they own the institutions of government. And the present people are alienated. Just like the National Constitution only alienates us. The Constitution says we the people of Nigeria, when we have no hand in it. That's how today we are alienated from due processes. And I think there's a limit to which you can run on the basis of that, that template. We must recalibrate Nigeria if we want it to. My concern here, Mr. Odomake, yes, is that if you say that this set of people have held Nigeria by its jugular for so yes. long, yes. and they are still there, yes. and they are still in charge, yes. they are everywhere in, in every sector of the Nigerian economy, yes. in its politics, yes. in its economy, yes. and all of that, yes. how are we going to get out of that logjam? If the same set of persons with the same kind of orientation, with the same kind of uh, ideology, if they have any at all, are the ones still running the show? That's why I mean, that's that's why many of us are insisting strongly on the, the structuring of this country, and then, and that's why I also will come up to up the game that we must restructure before we go for the next election. Because if you don't restructure and we go for the next election. We have further postponed the thing by another four years. Because hold the election 100 times on the basis of this structure, this template, the same set of people will continue to, because they, they, they allocated most of the oil blocks to themselves, they are washed with cash, they raise the bar, 
look at what they control in the political parties now. Even from the expression of intents to get your party form. Don't forget that the last elections are present now. He had to be explaining himself right from the time he went to take form of how he got money to even buy form. That's not, they have not gone to Aneko within your own party to take form that I want to contest. Mr. President had to be explaining himself and my friends contributed money because their money was so high. And so, and therefore, they have taken so many people out, 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 out of the scheme. So, it's their game we are running now. And until you change that game, and that's why we are asking that this one, when this one is structure, we cannot run in the face of templates we are running at the moment. That takes us to the whole question of leadership recruitment in Nigeria. Yeah. Some observers have uh, insisted that the process is wrong and that we'll continue to have these people who hold us down for as long as we continue the current uh, leadership recruitment exercise. Where certain individuals sit in their homes or in their offices and decide who occupies which office or who is nominated for which election and all of that. What must we do to change the recruitment, leadership recruitment pattern and process in Nigeria? Well, it's very clear. It's all linked to the structure. Look, this is EIT now. If you need, you need reporters, you need this thing now, you know where to recruit them. You know that the people who understand what the job is all about, who have a fair idea of journalism, who can report for address. You cannot go on. So let's get now, you now go to the Aso mechanic, uh, mechanic Village. I'm going to carry mechanic to go to come and work in EIT. So every system, every structure will recruit its own life. The system we are running now does not need the best, does not need the cream, does not need its best to run it. In fact, it needs its dregs. And that is why leadership in Nigeria today is the only thing that, that does not require background check, does not require qualification, does not require we are coming back. In fact, if you want to, if you want to employ a driver today, you will go through a more rigorous, rigorous process to recruit the driver that the person will go through to, to the less center of Nigeria. Because you ask, where is he coming from? Does he have a driver license? Where has he driven before? Why did he leave the place? You ask all those questions. Somebody can leave jail in, Amer in America today. Arrive at Abuja with his portfolio. He has a lot of dollars. They said the form is 50 million. He pays. Pay the electoral date. It's in your senator, in your senate. Have you forgotten? The day senator knew what you got up on the floor of the senate and raised up his hand. I said, Mr. Senate President, there are criminals in these chambers. They shot him up. But it was found out that he was, a, he was an EIG of police. He saw an armed robber, an armed robber caught in the scene, investigated by him, sitting next, sitting in the senate and said, What are you doing? He said, I'm a senator. So, and, and that's why today, was it, was it, was it, I mean, in the in the in, in the in the last how many years, what major contribution can we can use the call for an, for a national assembly? Maybe at Jakuya Noje. Compare that to the Senate of those in those days, in the Senate of the Second Republic, we sit glued to our television when senators like Adesoya or or, or, or Debbie opposed and they are making submissions all of on foreign senates. Those were the politicians who were quotable quotes. Between 1999 and now, which politicians have given you a quotable quote? So, the current leadership system and the structure in Nigeria is a reflection of the structure we are running. We need, we need Tauts, Agbe Rose, in the motor park. <laughs> Yinka Odumaki was a member of the 2014 National Conference. He is a very prominent member of the Afeni Ferrer Group, which is representative of the uh, Yoruba um, nationality in Nigeria. He's been an activist for so many years and has been talking to us on people, politics, and power. Thank you very much. My pleasure for coming. Thank you. Well, that's our program for today. My name is Imoni Amarere. Join us again as we bring you another edition of People, Politics, and Power. <laughs>